As you can see, in the life of any being, there is a time to work, a time to feed, a time to breed, a time to stay, and a time to go. All these actions are cyclical and take place day after day, season after season. They are repeated following the pace set by the Earth's rotation and movements. Man has measured these cycles with clocks and calendars and translated them into years, months, days, and seconds. Since they are circular movements, it's not difficult for a wild animal to determine when a period is going to begin or to end. Even man finds it easy to recognize when a new summer starts or ends after feeling the rising or falling temperatures. But animals are much more accurate in their forecasts. They have amazing light and humidity detectors and accurate barometers and thermometers. And they perceive when the heat has arrived and it's time to migrate to colder areas. Migration is a key time, and not only in the life of a specific individual or a couple. It may be essential for the whole colony, or even an entire species. The meeting of thousands of migrating animals may end in mass crowds where all the members of a species can be found. Therefore, the decision when each seasonal migration should start is critical. How do they know when it's the time to leave? What tool gives them such accurate information? Who decides? The answer lies in the combination of several factors. On the one hand, most species are sensitive to photo periods, the amount of light that reaches the Earth every day. Of the 365 days which consist of 24-hour periods, it is only on March 21st when day and night last 12 hours each. All the other days, light and darkness last different numbers of hours. And the animals are aware of it. Migrating animals are necessarily much more sensitive to these differences and are able to recognize when summer or winter is approaching. They are also able to perceive the arrival of rain. They detect variations in humidity and air pressure, as well as changes in the atmospheric electrical charge. As if they were living weather stations, Migrating species carefully observe any indication that may help them decide it is the perfect time to start their long migration. When for some animals it is time to migrate, for other animals, changes in the weather bring about the powerful need to prepare a shelter for their future offspring. Hormone clocks have the same accurate effect on every zoological class, but they generate different results in each species depending on the season. Their inner clock has told these birds that it is time to build a nest. The family is going to grow soon. They have to take into account the real time each couple will have available for their task, as well as the time their eggs will take to hatch. As with any other class of animal, they have to make birth coincide with the season with the most available resources. Their building instinct has been triggered by an infallible alarm clock, sexual hormones. These hormones decide when the animals have to look for and choose a mate. 
They have worked hard building a nest, but they have also built closer links and ties that will turn their relationship into a stable one with sexual love and fertility, the prerequisites to succeed genetically. Mating usually results in an egg. Most animals have chosen a small safe to ensure the protection of their children. Although it's meant for more than just protection, it's designed in such a way as to let the individual develop inside. It feeds the embryo, it allows the exchange of gases, and stores the embryo's toxic waste so it doesn't harm it there's no better incubator. In certain zoological families, gender is established within the egg, depending on the incubating heat. At average heat levels, the hatching of males and females is balanced. But if the temperature rises or falls much over or below the average, the female to male ratio is different and determined by the conditions for survival in the ecosystem. In addition, the eggs of some species are prepared and programmed to start or stop depending on external environmental conditions. Some of them can remain in suspended animation and will hatch many years later when they detect a certain air pressure, certain rays of sunlight, or a certain percentage of humidity. Embryo development is weather synchronized so that children see the sunlight at the best possible moment. Once again, life is taken to the extreme and shows how it can manage time. Temporary biological suspension is also possible outside the egg. Sometimes the only opportunity to beat the environment is to stop the clock, to disconnect, to fall into a latent state until conditions are favorable once again. In almost every zoological class, we can find animals that hibernate or rest in summertime. In those moments, they don't waste energy and therefore don't need to feed. For other animals, these pauses imply different stages in their lives. Insects, for instance, must complete a metamorphosis before becoming adults able to reproduce, which starts the cycle again. For some time, they seem to be dead, but they wait, motionless and dry, for their transfiguration to occur. The time it takes depends, as always, on external factors such as temperature, sunlight, humidity, etc. After a few days or a few years, the larva changes into a new being, which appears at the appropriate time. It's life in installments. It's something that goes beyond all our dreams. We don't have the power to delay our own life 
it's likely we will never have it. It may be because our soul is not designed to live forever, at least on this world. Nowadays, the freezing of embryonic or sexual cells and cloning could make, at least theoretically, a second life possible or make it easier to become parents after our deaths. But the methods to achieve this feat are questioned by society. While cryogenesis is still only possible for Sleeping Beauty.